Let's discuss next topic of set theory. It's about cardinality of sets. I already discussed cardinality. The number of elements present in a set called as its cardinality. Definition 1. The set A and B have same cardinality if and only if there is a one-to-one -one correspondence from A to B. When A and B have same cardinality, you can write as A cardinality equals to B cardinality. This symbol is used for cardinality. Definition 2. If there is a one-to-one -one function from A to B, the cardinality of A is less than or same as the cardinality of B. We can say if A cardinality is less than equals to B cardinality, then there is a possibility of one-to-one -one function. Moreover, when A cardinality less than equals to B cardinality and A and B have different cardinality, means A cardinality is less than B cardinality. It's for one-to-one -one function. For onto function, A cardinality can be greater than or equals to B cardinality. This is for onto, this is for one-to-one. -one. And for one-to-one -one correspondence, or we can say bijection, A cardinality should be equivalent to B cardinality. I already discussed all this during function, just go through the function lecture. Next, countable set. If we can count, if we can list it, then that is countable set. If we cannot count, then that is uncountable. So, a set is either finite or has the same cardinality as the set of positive integers called as countable. So, any finite set is countable or if there is a one-to-one -one correspondence with the positive integers, then that is countable. And a set that is not countable called as uncountable. Let's see one example. Example 1. So that the set of odd positive integer is countable set. So set of odd positive integer that you can write as f of n equals to 2n minus 1. 1, 3, 5, 7. These are the odd positive integer. So is it countable? Yes. We can match with the positive integers. So, we can compare with the positive integers like 1, it's first number, then 3, second, then 5, third number, 7, fourth number, 13 is the 7th number, 21 is the 11th number. So, we can compare the odd positive integers with the positive integers, that's why it is countable. If there is a one-to-one -one correspondence with the positive integer, then we can say it is countable. Here there is a one-to-one -one correspondence. So you can say set of odd positive integers is a countable set. Now see some example of countable and uncountable set. First example set of all integers is countable. Means both positive and negative integers are countable. Now example 2 so that set of positive rational number is countable. Rational number we can list as R1, R2 till Rn. And rational number is of the form of P divide Q, where P and Q are positive integers. So, we can list according to denominator. If it's 1, it will be in the first row. If it's 2, it will be in the second row, like this. Now, this is an example. Like here, all denominator are 1. Here, all are 2, all are 3, all are 4, all are 5. And we'll count corner wise. Like we'll count first 1 plus 1 is 2, then whose sum is 3, then whose sum is 4, then whose sum is 5. So if p plus q equals to 2, that will count first, then p plus q equals to 3, then p plus q equals to 4, like this. And whenever we encounter a number p divide q that is already listed, we do not list it again. Like first we list 1 divide 1, then 1 divide 2. Then 2 divide 1, then 3 divide 1, then 2 divide 2. This 2 divide 2 is equivalent to 1 divide 1 equals to 1. That we already listed, so we don't need to list it. We, we are not making circle here. We don't need to list 2 divide 2. Next we list 1 by 3, next we list 1 by 4, next 2 by 3, next 3 divide 2, next 4 by 1. Here you can mark all summer 5. Here sum is 2, 3, 4, 5, next sum is 6. So this whole sum is 6.
here we'll skip 2 by 4 2 by 4 is equivalent to 1 by 2 4 by 2 that is equivalent to 2 by 1 3 by 3 that is equivalent to 1 so we can list the rational number as we can list as there is a one-to-one -one correspondence possible with the positive integers so it is countable so this set of rational number are countable let's see some example of uncountable set example 3 so that this set of real number is an uncountable set to show this set of real number is uncountable we suppose that set of real number is countable and arrive at a contradiction it's a way of proof We'll consider it as countable and if we arrive a contradiction then it will prove as uncountable. So this subset of all real number that fall between 0 and 1 should be countable. A subset of countable set is also countable. So the real number between 0 and 1 you can list as R1, R2, R3 like this. So you can write R1 as 0. Digit 1, digit 1, 2, digit 1, 3, digit 1, 4, like this. Then R2 as digit 2, 1, D2, 2, D2, 3, D2, 4. Suppose you are writing 0 0.1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, till infinite that comes between 0 and 1. So, like this, there are lots of number and we cannot list out all. Okay, we cannot list out all the real number that between 0 and 1. So as we cannot list out, it's uncountable. All the real number between 0 and 1 cannot be listed. So set of real number between 0 and 1 are uncountable. As this is uncountable, so it's super set means all real number is also uncountable. As you consider a subset, as the subset is uncountable, so the whole real number is uncountable. So any set with an uncountable subset is also uncountable. As the subset is uncountable, so the set of real number is uncountable. Just remember set of real numbers are uncountable. Now theorem 1, if A and B are countable set, then A union B is also countable. Definition 4, it's about a function is computable or uncomputable. We say that a function is computable if there is a computer program in some programming language that find the value of this function and a function is not computable, we say that uncomputable. So just remember some important point like every infinite set S contain a countable subset. If one set is infinite, it doesn't mean that it doesn't contain a countable subset. So one set can be infinite, it may be uncountable, but its subset can be countable. Every subset of a countable set is countable. If one set is countable, then every subset of it is countable. Power set of a countable set is uncountable. Suppose S is countable then power set of it, it is uncountable. This is uncountable. And set of all integers is countable. And set of positive rational number is countable. I already proved this. The set R is uncountable. That is real numbers are uncountable. The set Z square is countable. Q is countable. The set of infinite sequence is uncountable. If it is finite, it's countable. If it is infinite, it may be countable, may be uncountable. Like positive integer, countable. Real number, uncountable. Rational number, countable. If one set is finite, then that is obviously countable. If one set is infinite, that may be countable or may be uncountable. Depends on the set. With this, I am finishing cardinality. In next lecture, I will discuss relation. If this lecture is helpful for you, please like, share and subscribe. Thank you.